Can you see me okay? All right. I still don't have my camera set hey. up together, but I'll get there. <laughs> hey, everybody. <laughs> you kind of got in on me and Lisa chatting. I'm sorry we're running a little bit late. There has been all kinds of technical difficulties that um, – <laughs> Notice my new jewelry. Got a little AirPod action going. <laughs> Oddly enough, it's We're not. My... Oh, that's why I wore it. I wanted to make Lisa feel more comfortable. No, and actually, I feel horrible because I'm like, Lisa, your your mic is messed up. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. And then it's like, it's my speaker, is what it seems to be. So, many apologies. I see Joanne and Apple and Linda are already here, and I appreciate you guys so much all the time. Um, it is it is summer now, and how are you feeling about that over where you are? Are you you're in San Francisco, right? Because that's the San Francisco I, kitchen, or is that yes? That? I no no. This is the San Francisco. I just got back very late last night from Chicago, actually, and I think my friend Beth is going to watch. Um, my very, very dear friend, Beth, she's like my sister. Um, and I was visiting her in Chicago. My flight was delayed last night, but I'm back in San Francisco. Yay. I love San Francisco. <laughs> well, and Texas is kind of super crappy right now. Uh, I am like, I don't ever need to go back to Austin again, <laughs> except that oh, our son no. is there, but, but he came here to visit. So, um, yeah, it's like been in the triple digits every day already. And many days it's been like raining and in the triple digits. So it's like, you know, like steam and it's like a soup, <laughs> a very hot soup. It's not nice when it's like super humid. Those of you who may not live in human climate, A, I don't understand your makeup. Um, I did it. I did it once. I lived in Arizona because I was like, I can live anywhere because I, everywhere I lived was fine. Everywhere I lived was humid. Um, and so I feel like it's it's the... The soupy heat rising up, it's very oppressive. You feel like you can't breathe. It doesn't yeah. happen that much. It's it's not a normal thing. And like in, in Arizona, I could feel like the the moisture leaving my skin. And I still blame any wrinkles I have on my year in Arizona. Because I'm like, that's what did it. And uh, Colleen and Justine and Joanne are here. And it's awesome to see all you guys here. Uh, well, I'm glad you're in San Francisco. And here... yeah, actually... mm -hmm. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say. So yesterday... Um afternoon there was like this news alert in chicago that it was like the worst um air quality on the planet because what had happened was the winds brought in the uh the smoke from the fires in canada and like when i went to get my uber to the airport i was like choking it was terrible <gasps> and yeah it was really bad i'm sure i hope it's better today i have to check in with my friend beth so that was another reason i was really happy to get back to san francisco because the air and it wasn't like that. I was there since I was there over a week with my friend and um, it, the weather was beautiful while we were there. But then just yesterday, the, the city was just like covered in this like really bad smog. Well, we in North Carolina, so I'm very far from Chicago and very far from Canada, but we have air quality warnings for the next couple of days. And you can even because of the Canadian fires. Oh, you're kidding. No, this isn't the first time. So I'm assuming it must be really bad and the wind must have shifted a lot. But yeah. um, usually I open up the house in the morning and I decide to be prudent, which is unusual yeah. for me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and Cheryl went out and she's like, I can smell the smoke. Oh, and yeah. um, Kathy from, is in Wisconsin and the air quality is still horrible. And Apple says, yeah. I like how moisture Sorry. falls from the sky in the Pacific Northwest. I'll take rain over heavy, heavy humid, humid, ugh, heavy, humid weather yeah. any day. And it, I'm with you. I'm with you on that. <laughs> it's, it's very weird. So I lived in Louisiana. I lived in New Orleans for about 12 years. And so like, I love literally, Louisiana. But that's beautiful like soup there. Oh, it's super soup. And so when I lived there too, I played with the orchestra. So I 
lived in a house that had no air conditioning that eventually I got a couple of units but like these are those old beautiful shotgun houses with like really tall ce ceilings so even if you just put one little unit in there it doesn't do much also you can see light coming from between the floorboards like these are old, you old houses you had me at when I was playing with the orchestra oh <laughs> yeah you didn't know that yet yeah, no. uh, that's what that's what my degrees are in music performance, and I played with the Louis, Louisiana Philharmonic for two years before I decided. What do you play? To I did not French know this. Horn. Your fans probably all know this. I did. oh my gosh, that's amazing. I don't talk about it that much because it's so long ago since I. I mean, I don't even think I was thirty when I left the orchestra, so it feels like so like last lifetimes. year. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you, you know, trying to be sweet. Because we're this because we're the same age. <laughs> thirty two. No, okay, not even right. thirty eight. Okay, I admit it. I'm thirty two. <laughs> <laughs> you crack me up. I love I know, it. I love <laughs> we're we're awesome for our age, I think. And so think you so. dress like a grown up. And I don't. I do. So I think. No. Oh, no, 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 no. No? Okay. <laughs> I'm kind of like. Much... I'm, I, it's so funny because I was going to wear this t-shirt that I just got, but I thought that might be too much for Kathy's show. <laughs> Ooh, what is it? Did it have a curse word in it? Because we don't curse on the show. But other No than that... curse words. No, it's really, I got it at Target of all places, but like I love, I wear t-shirts and jeans most of the time, shorts. I wear thrift store jackets. I wear a lot of hats. And um, I was in Target in Chicago with my, um, my friend Beth was visiting has 11 uh, year old twins. They're amazing. A boy and a girl, v Viola and Blake. And I was with Viola at Target and um, I was got, getting her something. She wanted to get some things. And I went to the adult t-shirt section and, you know, they have all the graphic tees. And it's just really funny because I saw this t-shirt and it's basically it's this t a black t-shirt for Biggie Smalls, the rapper. And but it's a picture of him as a baby with like a giant head. It's just a fun, I, you have to see it. I should probably go get it. Anyway, I was going to wear that. But then I was like, mm, I'll wear my more conservative t-shirt today. Oh, no, no, no. Remember, I'm the one who wears the weird creepy shirts and the vampires and the kids and stuff. So no. That's true. What was I thinking? I know. This is a safe t-shirt space. <laughs> Thank you. Well, that, that's great because now you'll get to see like my crazy t-shirt collection. One of my favorites was, um, it's it's an old Napster t-shirt. Everyone, whenever I wear that, oh, I, David just brought me my Biggie Smalls t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> that's adorable. Isn't that so fun? I love that it's like a baby picture, you know? <laughs> that's great. Anyway, I have to wash it. So, oh. <laughs> um I do that too. Aside. <laughs> so uh, what we're getting from Canada is that in Ottawa, it's still really bad. And Linda, I forget exactly what city and Providence you're from. Um, they're being told where she lives in Canada, to stay inside. If you have to go outside, wear a mask as the air quality is mm -hmm. so unhealthy. It's so smoky that the sensor lights keep coming on. That's crazy. That is pretty. You know, I was wondering if my flight yet last night, I got to the airport, my flight was delayed. And I asked the, the ticketing agent, I said, is it possible the flight's going to be canceled because of the smoke? And she said, no, it's not affecting air air traffic at all. So that I was glad about that. But it looked like it, it could be. It was, yeah. It seems like it would have to go up so super. But I guess if it went up that super high, it wouldn't be coming this super far down. Yeah, I don't understand yeah. weather and atmosphere and stuff. They didn't no. teach us that in music school. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. So um, you're glad you're in San Francisco. It's feeling pretty good. And Joanne's saying you're flying above it. And that totally makes sense. I was just more thinking getting up out of it, you know, like if that would affect visibility because, you know, certain weather can you know, until you get above the weather. But, uh, but I guess, you know, and Chicago's the windy city. And so, 
you know, we, uh, and the, you've got the lake there. So I was just really surprised that the, I, I don't know, I was surprised that the smoke settled like that in Chicago for those reasons. But, um, but hopefully it's better today. I have to check in with Beth. Or if anybody's in Chicago, let us know. If Wisconsin's yeah. bad. Yeah. Totally do. And Linda's in Windsor, Ontario. I don't know why I always forget that. And it's bordering with Detroit. So, right, right, so, right. Well, you know, la a couple of weeks ago, so my mom lives in upstate New York in the mountains. It's so beautiful. There's so much oxygen. She's, it's just all trees. It's very rural. And I was there a couple of weeks ago. And the day I left there, it's like it's following me. Uh, the day I left there, um, at noon, it looked like it was sunset because the smoke from Canada had come in and they were warning everyone in the area not to hate, like to be outside. I couldn't believe it. I've never in the, you know, my mom's lived there since the eighties and I've never seen it like that. And then, so I was flying through Detroit to get back here and Detroit was bad because, you know, Detroit's closer. Right. So it was kind of crazy. And Joanne was saying, did we see the pics of New York city? And I did last time this happened, what, which was, like what a couple a month or two ago yeah spring so i was kind of surprised it's all happening again being yeah. so not close to canada i mean north carolina mm -hmm. is not close to canada like we're going to go to massachusetts in the fall and it's going to be a 12-hour drive and we are still not near canada yeah <laughs> right so it's kind of no. crazy yeah, it's a little um, scary, actually. But let's talk about happy things now, because I'm like, oh, my gosh, the world is coming to an end. <laughs> okay, well, I wanted to ask you a couple of quick questions. We'll, we'll transition. Okay. And so, probably some of it's because I was so panicked about how are we going to do this live? Um, and, and it kind of segues with this. So when things are being kind of stressful, or you feel mm -hmm. like you your normal routine, because I, I know we usually talk to Lisa Rice, the chef and mm -hmm. recipe developer. So you're also a health coach. Mm -hmm. And so I was wondering if you have any tips for these times that either it's too hot to be outside, it's too smoky, something mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that you're, mm -hmm. that's out of your control. Cause I know mm -hmm, for me mm -hmm. last year, like summer, I didn't exercise at all. My liver numbers went way up. <laughs> You know, it takes so little for me to bring mm -hmm, my liver mm -hmm. numbers down. But mm -hmm. um, the older I get, and we've had this conversation in, with the group a few times. So, like, evidently, I'm going to live somewhere between it. It's like 55 to 78 to 80 degrees all the time. But mm -hmm. I get exhausted, too, just from being in the heat. So if someone... It's kind of like feeling flummoxed because, well, they say I can't go outside again. Or, you know, how would you refocus them? Um, well, I think that you talked about a couple of things there. One was the stress of like the getting the live show together and having technical difficulties and the anxiety over not being able to go outside with weather. I mean, there's a lot of we have just stressors coming at us all the time. And um, so what that what our how our body reacts to those stressors is um, when early man like stress is a good thing. We, we need a stress response to react. Right. So like when we were, you know, pri you know, like early man, nomadic hunting, gathering, more gathering than hunting, by the way, <laughs> very little hunting. Um, you know, we needed that stress response. If there was a predator, like a saber toothed tiger, we had to run and get away from it and then we were fine. Or if there was inclement weather or, you know, like a hailstorm, right? <clears throat> so our body, you know, has this physiological stress response and we need to have a stress response to, to survive. But what happens is our minds in the modern time, like we have all these things we're worrying about and thinking about and all these, you know, problems all the time in our heads that may not even be real problems, but our body is still responding to that as if we're being chased by the saber toothed tiger. So when people have high blood pressure and they have migraine headaches because they have a lot of stress in their lives that they're not managing, that's why it's, this, it's called survival mode. So, and our body is not meant to be in survival mode all the time. <clears throat> so there, there are a lot of different things you can do. I mean, we all know that meditation is really, really good for us and important. And I think a lot of us really struggle to do that. I am definitely one of those people. 
Um, so, but there are a lot of different ways to do meditation. Um, there's, you know, guided meditations you can listen to, you know, there's, uh, what's it called? Um, insight timer is free. There's calm. There's 10% happier that have great guided meditations, um, walking meditations. Um, so that's like probably like the number one thing I would say, but also connecting with your breath, because when we're in that alert, you know, that state of, of fight or flight, we, we're usually not connected with our body or our breath. So it's really important to stop what you're doing and breathe and just get yourself centered as best you can, you know, um, cause that's very helpful. And then what you said was really interesting because you had an, you have this awareness, right. Of what's happening. So the second you can identify that you're spinning out over something, being able to even identify your, that and realize this is all this crazy stuff going on in your head <clears throat> is, is a, like one of the first steps, I think, because then you can sort of bring yourself like what's actually happening right now in this moment, which is why meditation is so important because that takes you right here, right now, you know? And so walking meditation is another one. I'm not great at sitting meditation. Yoga, like I used to do Ashtanga yoga. That was my meditation. So um, there are a lot of different techniques and we have a lot of information about that on the We Heal website, Dr. Alona Polde and Dr. Matthew Letterman. That's sort of the deep dive they took from Forks Over Knives. And then they wrote well, uh, From Wellness to Wonderful and started We Heal. This, that's, they brought all this into it. So, And I love that. And I'm pulling us back up together so they can see weheal.health is the site that you want to uh -huh. do. Yes. I know uh -huh. sometimes when I get super anxious, because I definitely over different times deal with certain anxieties and I, I would be lying if I didn't say I was nervous about the whole political cycle getting ready to begin because mm -hmm. um, a few years ago, I threw out my back the day after the election. I literally leaned over to get some mm -hmm. silverware out of the dishwasher and hit the floor. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so I know how I can manifest. So a lot of times for me, if I start feeling it happen, mm -hmm. so A, I, I will see, look around. What is something that would be a gift if somebody else did for me that mm. I can do mindlessly and try and do that? So like one of the things I'll do is like load the dishwasher, unload the dishwasher. Um, spray some stuff on the counters and walk away because you know what if you don't come back it'll still loosen things up and you can spray them down again you know something <laughs> to take some sort of positive action yeah. and i will well, also say with peloton because i'm i'm on their kind of echo sphere exercise i sphere. love my peloton we'll get to that we'll have a whole other conversation about that okay that sounds great because they have really great meditations and they're really great they for do. all different kinds of people and you can have a five minute meditation so and i have calm too and that's how i go to sleep now I'm, i always pick a sound and now i'm kind of like rolling thunderstorms you know probably if you played it to me <laughs> well kathy so, you, you know, know what you just described is really really great and i want to emphasize that so you described bringing yourself present by loading and unloading the dishwasher by wiping down the that is meditation so i think for anybody watching this so what intimidates people is they think they have to go sit in a quiet place undisturbed for an hour and meditate that's not what it's about the, the, that practice is to enable you to be present in everything you're doing. Um, so, you know, anyone can go sit in a quiet cave and just sit there, right? The hardest part is taking that being present into our daily, daily lives because we're so busy and it's like, you know, we think we have to stop what we're doing, but the whole point of it is to be present in our actions that we're doing. So what you just said is actually one of the most like important things that anybody can, can realize is that you can create meditation in any act you're doing. So I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Oh, thank you for like, just making me feel so awesome right now. Cause sometimes I do <laughs> you that are when awesome. I feel like, oh, I just can't do anything else. So let me just see what, what tiny thing can I do? But yeah, or also, but it is you know, true. And also, uh -huh. And then also just like um, another practice is like identifying things in your environment, like, you know, stove, you know, glass bowl, you know, ceiling, light, sun, you know, and nature is one of the most healing things if you've got a lot of anxiety and enough of us, self-included, 
don't get out in nature enough. And so just getting out in nature, getting your feet on the earth, you know, looking at the trees, hearing the sounds of the birds, like stopping your mind enough to like notice. Um, Cause we spend so much time in our heads. And I think that's the thing that, like I said, that's our, bo our, our body doesn't know that we're in our heads. It thinks we're being chased. So, um, so it's good to be aware of those, our mind. And um, actually I'm going to go ahead and announce it now since we're talking about it, but Dr. Matthew Letterman and a Dr. Alona Polday from Forks Over Knives, who are now with We Heal, are going to be, it's not posted yet, I don't have the dates yet, but so keep, you can join the mailing list if you want to know about it, but they're giving a master class. Um, I think it's going to be four week series in September called um, Nutrition, Lifestyle and Connection Medicine. That's what they do. And it's all, it's going to be talking about all this, like how diet, and lifestyle are so important for our health, but they're going to talk about all these things we've been talking about and bringing in the tools and the practices to help us connect with ourselves, because that's what we're talking about, connecting with ourselves mm -hmm. and connecting with everything and everyone around us, because it's all part of it. You know, even I, I, I just wrote our new newsletter and I'm about to send it out, but I started with the Surgeon General's warning, right, is that disconnection is an epidemic that's affecting our health. And science and data shows that it affects inflammation in our body, our biomarkers, it can, it can contribute to type two diabetes and heart disease. And so that's what Dr. Letterman and Dr. Polde, that's a lot of what the work they're doing right now. Um, so I'm glad that we, we got to talk about this because I really want, um, I, I'm really hoping people will take advantage of this, this series they're doing. That's super juicy. So what I want you to promise me <laughs> <laughs> is uh <-huh>. that a <laughs> once it's announced you're sending it to me so i can send it out in a newsletter and we can put it in in okay. the youtube descriptions of the stuff going forward because i think it sounds awesome because i think mm -hmm. you know we're all in these different places at different times but i think it's like a wheel and we all pass through like being really cool with yourself and feeling really awesome mm -hmm. and then you go to mm -hmm. the next part where you're like what <laughs> <laughs> freaking out you know and that's life constantly... yeah 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 and, and joanne said i hate it when i'm being chased by saber tooth tigers and <laughs> same here <laughs> and and i could not agree more with the whole nature thing like you like when i was experiencing a lot of really bad anxiety a couple of years ago um i take myself out on a walk i go by myself mm -hmm. i don't take the dog I want to, and even now while it's getting too hot for me, I'm trying to get up early, sit outside on the deck at work where I can hear the mm -hmm. birds, where I can see a butterfly or a hummingbird, because mm. they're such tiny things. Very that, calming. And it just really yeah. feeds, feeds my, feeds me as well. And well, and Apple says, if you're, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, you go. I was just going to say, Apple says my med meditation practice involves movement. And I enjoy swimming for the same reason and weaving. Yeah. Oh, Apple, I weaving? need to see some of you. Yes. Weaving. Yes, that is meditation. That is meditation right there. Yeah, Any anybody oh. who plays an instrument, so you know this, playing an instrument is a meditation, right? Because it brings you present and it gets you into this flow where you're not in your head thinking about other things. So weaving, it's, yes. It's it's kind of like when all the things kind of come and they're almost stacked on top of each other is the way I think about it. It's not like one thing's yeah. doing another thing. And right, Justine right. said, she set up a Zen area in her yard, a peaceful spot to just sit and relax. And I love it, which Ooh. is amazing. And then she said the funniest thing she goes, but, but truth be told, I mostly watch Kathy Hester videos. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love it. Yes. I, 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 I well, highly recommend that I'm gonna put I'm gonna to have to put that in my list of recommendations. <laughs> I have been called the Bob oh, Ross of cooking before. Ooh, oh, what a high compliment! Yes, I love that. <laughs> it's hilarious, but thank you for well, letting cook. us go on Excuse a different my... path. Uh oh. Oh, hello. Can you hear me? Can you Can you hear me? Uh Oh no, can you not hear me? You're back, you're back, you're back. Yay. Okay. Whew. Please, um, no more technical difficulties. Okay, I'm going to no, do please. what the that's lady tiger, told me to do. No, <laughs> deep in breath, everybody, with me. 
The tiger Aww. just appeared, Kathy. <laughs> Um, so I was going to yeah, thank so, you for being willing to go down this weird road, and then I I was going to let you segue to the shawarma that you're making for us. So I'm going <laughs> to let, and you can talk okay. about how this is like meditation too. Yeah. So this is not a weird road. It's a really important road because uh, what we've seen, Dr. Letterman, Dr. Pulde, and I working with them as a health coach. You know, we have plenty of people who reverse their disease through diet and exercise, and it's wonderful. Um, but there are plenty of people who either struggle to be able to do that, make those changes, and the people who do make the changes and they still have high blood pressure or whatever. So what we're talking about is really important. It's not, diet is very, very important. And we know v- veganism is better for the planet. Um, if you're whole food plant-based, it's better for your health, but, and all those things are really, really important. But what the, I'm so glad like you talked about this, cause it's a huge part of a healthy life and a healthy world, you know, not just for ourselves, for everyone around us. I mean, you know, you were talking about the election and how you threw out your back. It's like, you know, if everybody engaged in a little bit more awareness and connection with the self and others, the world would be a much better place. So thank you for bringing that up. Uh, well, I just, I love talking to you about things and your, your insight and opinions and expertise is so <laughs> valuable. So just know how much I value and appreciate oh. you too, please. Uh, well, I feel the same. And you're like this wise sage that just has this very innate sort of natural ability to engage in these things that, that are very helpful to everyone, which is why everyone loves you and why I love you. <laughs> Aww. Well, so. I just, for me, I think one of the ways I get it, it, t- when you teach something. So even if you're teaching cooking mm-hmm. or a recipe, it helps you learn better, right? So I've taught so many yeah. different things. So when I'm as I'm trying to work on myself and get myself more balanced, though I don't know mm-hmm. that balance is really a word that is ever going to suit me, but kind of get <laughs> things more. <laughs> More in that column that we were talking yeah. about. It might look a little more like a, a Lego column. <laughs> but, but, you know, I think by telling people what I'm doing and feeling, I get so much information when people also talk about how they're doing things and yeah. how you're looking at things. So I think that I gain so much by being just honest and vulnerable. And, and I think it's not that I could ever be the yoga girl influencer, Instagrammer anyhow. You you already are. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what you're talking about. (laughs) You crack me up. I, I think more people would relate to you as the yoga girl influencer than some of the yoga girl influencers. I'm just saying. But anyway, that's a whole yeah. other conversation. You and I could, we always go through this when we get together. It's like we have about like a year's worth of conversations we need to do over time, right? I know. And it's, isn't it amazing that we just met this year? It's crazy. Yeah. No, we've been friends for lifetimes or something. I don't know. <laughs> that I agree with. That I agree with. Okay, I'm going to be okay, quiet. Let me get and I, I want to see I'm these get this things. started just because we need about 20 minutes to cook. So I know this is a barbecue class, and so let's um, suspend reality and pretend that we have a, our grill going, and we have you know how the barbecue they have those grill pans, you know that you can cook on the grill like peppers and onions and things. Yeah. So or you could. Or you could put a cookie sheet on the grill. So I like to do my shawarma in the oven. You could very easily, and I meant to not, I meant to keep one of my portobellos intact because you could throw it on the grill and then slice it up, but I forgot. So, um, but anyway, so I'm going to just do this in the oven for now. You could do, do this on a grill pan on your gas oven or your charcoal stove or whatever, or you can do it in the oven like I'm doing. I've got the oven at about 425. So for today, you know how much I love mushrooms, but not everybody loves mushrooms. We're going to do mushrooms. We've got to have the red onion. And then for those of you who don't like mushrooms, um, I really love these Butler soy curls. I know you. (gasps) Soy. Oh, I'm in love with them. Yes. Aren't they so good? And it's funny because I think we talked about this one other time that um, in the Asian markets, they sell this in so many different forms and they don't call them soy curls. It's like, I think what it is is when they make, 
soy milk and certain soy products. It's the stuff that rises to the top and they skim it off and they dry it. And so when you rehydrate oh, Yuba. it, it's like, yeah, yeah. Yuba. Yuba, Yuba. I love, yeah. So that's when I first <gasps> learned about it back when I was macrobiotic in the eighties, Yuba. And then now it's soy well, curls. <laughs> And if you guys are, if I've gotten anybody to start making their own home, homemade soy milk, what you totally have to do is as it's cooling, you, it's going to make a little thin sheet of Yuba and you're going to be like, ew, that looks nasty. Trust me. Pick that thing off and pop it in your mouth and it is the best thing you have ever had. Oh my gosh. I love Yuba. Okay. So what I did was I drew, they were dried when I put them in here and I threw in, I like to... So you can just use water, but I like to season them because they'll really absorb whatever flavor. So we're making shawarma. So I'm pretend, we're going to pretend this is chicken or whatever. So I used one bouillon of this in with it. You could use better than bouillon, which I really love. This has a little bit of, are, are your viewers, it's, it's just vegan. It doesn't have to be oil-free, right? It doesn't have to be oil-free, but I always offer a, a lot of people are oil-free. Some people are SOS. So like okay. both the- Okay, okay. So, so if you guys are looking for a bullion that doesn't have, that's SOS free, whole food, plant-based, if you, yeah, better than bullion this, is this super is a, tasty. This is, this is oil free, but it's got sodium. It's got salt. It does. And if you go to healthyslowcooking.com and look up bullion, you'll find both my um, super cheap freezable bullion cubes. It's just onion, carrots, thyme, celery. Oh, is it your celery. recipe? So it's my recipe. Okay. Yeah. And, and so you, you just put it in your slow cooker or whatever, then you puree it with some nutritional yeast and freeze it. I also have mm -hmm. a dry bullion for chickeny and a dry bullion for beefy. If you guys that are, that is SOS friendly. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, do that if you can. Um, if you're not SOS free, these are super easy. They've got a little oil in them. This one doesn't have oil in it. Um, so I just like to, the point being is that I like to season my, my um re rehydrating liquid so that it infuses the soy curls with a little flavor and i love that i i'm usually the lazy person that uses water but then i put a lot of flavor <laughs> on after but you have to flavor them one end or the other for sure and people are saying um they're not sure what shawarma is so if you could talk about that a little bit and apple always has some of my bullion in the freezer so i if you oh can make gosh. it it, yeah, you should, you it's, should totally there's nothing like homemade. try it. There's nothing like well, homemade. It, and I know that one of my chef friend mentors, Chad Sarno did have, I'll have to find it and share it with you. And you might even know about it. There is a bouillon cube that is whole food plant-based SOS free. Um, I think it's SOS free because Ooh. he, yeah, because he, um, show, he shared it with me when we were, I was assisting him. I think it was teaching an, a class to, for an oil-free class. So um, I'll have to find it. I'll have to ask him. But homemade soy is best. <laughs> yeah, and Veggie's saying soy curls are not Yuba. Exactly. We're not trying to say soy curls are Yuba. We are just saying, you know, we were talking about some other soy products in the Asian market. Soy curls You're right, specifically – is a specific um, product by someone in Oregon. It's with non-GMO soybeans that are cooked, then extruded. It only has one ingredient. Yeah, it's not Yuba. That's that's absolutely correct. But I just, to me, it's kind of like the new Yuba because you don't really, I don't think any, other than an Asian market, I don't think I've ever seen Yuba anywhere, and it is a similar product. So, um, but yeah, if you can get real Yuba or make it yourself with Kathy's recipe, then do do that. <laughs> um, all right, so I, so here's all my. I'm gonna roast these, but at first I'm gonna season them with cumin, coriander, some paprika, salt and pepper, and I'm gonna stick it in the oven. And I'm gonna toss it from, and I'm gonna do that for like 20 minutes. If we were at the gas grill in Austin at my house it would be on a sheet pan um, and I'd be doing it on the grill. Um, so let me get my seasonings. Oh, oh wait, first though, well, no, no, let me get this going and then I'll what? show you what else I'm gonna do. Yeah, and cause what I was thinking too, if you wanna go ahead and put the spices on and maybe talk about shawarma or where that comes from. Oh, right, shawarma. Any... You know, <laughs> B, I feel really unprepared for my test today. Um, oh. So um, I know shawarma to be. <laughs> I, I know. Like, I'm, so I'm, I'm, 
<laughs> when I first learned about shawarma, okay, I, when I was living in New York, going to college in the 80s, and I was vegan, I was macrobiotic, um, the, I would go to this falafel shop on McDougal Street. They had the best falafel. It was so good. And shawarma is like this meat on a, on a spit kind of that they roast, slow roast with the seasonings, and then they sort of shave it to make a sandwich in a pita bread. Is that shawarma? That's shawarma, right? Yeah, that's the shawarma I know. There's also a gyro that looks similar, but it's not the same spices, and I don't think it's from the same area of the world. I made a shawarma, uh, the, like, I think a couple of years ago. I think it was during lockdown. We did three Middle mm -hmm. Eastern classes, and I did a oh, meaty okay. one. So I did a shawarma, and I did, is it kibba? Kib I forget what it oh, is. Kibbe, kib was, kibbe, 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 that's it. Yes, meat yes, stuffed yes. meat. I was like, I'm gonna make me yes. some of that. And so I use like millet and mushrooms and stuff. But the spices Ooh, we'll and the flavors. Yeah, oh, so gosh. it's cumin, coriander, paprika, right? I in Austin I have a giant container of of um oh my gosh, I'm having a brain fart. Um I was gonna say duca, but it's not duca. It's um the other one. Uh, oh the, and why did I just help. forget to? I I know I have <laughs> I was thinking, I have, it's, um, I'm looking in my spice thing to see if I can find it too. Cause it's the one that's kind of lemony and red, right? No, 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 no. You're uh, that's not that Marissa, one. No, 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 no. It's, it's um, um, Zatar. Zatar is one of them. Zatar. Thank you. Thank you. See, this is what happens okay. when you get to, you get to be our age. Zatar spice. So I like to put Zatar spice on, especially right before I serve it, but, um, I don't have any here. So I'm putting, I put on about a teaspoon or so, and I'll post the recipe of cumin and I'm gonna put in some uh, paprika. So I've got some sweet paprika. You can use smoked paprika. I've actually got both here. I'm gonna put both. So basically we're I just gonna season it up. Yeah, we wanna just season up. So we're gonna season up the, oh, sorry, you're not seeing what I'm doing. I'm just seasoning up the, um, the veggies here. Ooh, it looks so good. So if you are so as free, obviously you're not going to put the salt and then I'm going to just put this in the oven and then I'm going to do, so the, when I make my shawarma, I really love the spicy pickled things. <laughs> and um, because I got home late last night, I didn't make, I didn't have, it was, I was too tired to cook, get in the kitchen and cook. So um, I'm going to make some quick pickles, but so you'll see when um, I assemble this, that I'm going to put, I'm going to make a yogurt sauce and I'm going to make um, some, some quick pickles, but I'm going to season this up first and put it in the oven. Um, if I can figure out how to open my Trader Joe's. And see, I want to, I want to try and help you open it so bad and I can't, I always take a spoon. I take a, cause oh, isn't okay. it the thing, isn't it like a, tr a triangular sort of shape thing? You know, I don't know. I've never gotten this one before. I'm like, well, how do you, oh, there, I did it. I did it with a knife. Okay. <laughs> um, Yay. They, yay. I'm being it's very, like, so, like, uh-huh. I was just going to say, they okay. make things so hard to get into. Oh, it's different than the one I thought. I was thinking it was like an Old Bay seasoning can. Oh, um, right, right. So, and um, Kathy, the most, these are, uh-huh. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. You, you finished. Oh, no, I was just going to say, so those Middle Eastern spices that we're talking about, cumin, coriander, um, paprika, za'atar, those, you can really just be very creative with using your spices and, you know, just play around. And a, do I have ground coriander? Let me find. Okay, go ahead. You had a question? Oh, and I love ground coriander. I'm trying to... I'm trying to remember that red spice too. I don't know why I can't think of it. I have a whole bunch of it. So I'm Googling it's it. not, sumac. It's not, it's not sumac. Oh, sumac. Yeah. Yeah. Sumac yeah, is delicious. Okay. I can't um, find my coriander. I might have to grind some up quickly cause I can't find any. So I'm going to grind a little up cause I have the coriander, uh, um, for my pickles, I have the coriander seeds. So I'm going to grind a little Ooh. bit up. And yeah. I just, it's, it's such a floral flavor. 
I use it a lot in different kinds of foods that you wouldn't normally. And I put some in my Cajun seasoning and I put some Ooh. in my chili powder sometimes because I find that it's maybe it's from trying different new cuisines, but it's kind of adjacent to cumin. And I feel like it takes the harshness off of the cumin when you put them in together. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I could see that. I'm, a, I'm, I'm such a, a spice geek. Cardam cardamom. Oh, me too. And you, have I mean, we had this conversation about black cardamom? No. Talk to me about black cardamom. Oh, it's smoked cardamom. It tastes different, but it's amazing. Amazing. Because I am, I am queen of all things smoking. Oh, and Joanne says the newest um, smoked paprika from Trader Joe's is really tasty. Oh, is that um, this one? Cause I, I, this is my first time trying it. Is that the one? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the one that she says is really good. Okay. So and, I grabbed um, my... Davika is in Chicago and says it was really bad on all capitals. Today is better, but still hazy. Yeah, yesterday I, I had like, I got in the Uber and I didn't realize how bad it was. I was coughing and my eyes were stinging. Oh, jeez. So, yeah, it was pretty bad. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stick this in the oven. Um, and then I'm going to make the pickles. And a sweet day, you know, I got in really late last night. So I texted David, my husband, a couple of days ago. I'm like, I'm not going to get home in time. Can you go to the farmer's market and get me some portobello mushrooms? And this, like, I gave him this whole list. And he did. I, so he's I was very sweetest. lucky he did my shopping. I know. He's, he's like kind of my sous chef. <laughs> Lon, he was a he was a trooper trying to help us troubleshoot too. So I appreciate yes. him today extra. And Veggie V yes. says thank you, Lisa, for getting your rest so that you can give us your best today. Oh, thank you. Okay, let's stick that in there. Okay, so now, um, so pickles are like you make pickles, right? And I love pickles of all kinds, and I love dick, dill pickles, sweet pickles, spicy pickles. So this is something, I, so when I was in Austin, I was getting the CSA boxes and um, in the summer, like toward the end of the summer, especially, but in the summer, you get just a ton of root vegetables. Like you don't really get the leafy greens as much because it's so hot. Um, and I was like, what am I going to do with all of these like, you know, candy cane radishes and just turnips and all these, like I, I had so many of them in my vegetable drawer. I had no room for anything else. So I started pickling them. And um, so what I'm going to do right now is make a super, super easy, quick pickle. So I went through my vegetable drawer and I had some radishes that I shaved. Um, carrots. I love carrots. I had, I have, this is going to turn, if you put anything like beets or purple cabbage or even cabbage or radishes in, it's going to turn the vegetables a little bit of that color. Um, I had bits and bobs of cabbage, hard vegetables, right? Are you, you're laughing. You do this too? No, but I think it's awesome. I make stews like this, but I haven't done. Yeah, pick, yeah. I, I have like all these like super good pickling things, like the little things that like let the fermentation burps come out of your jars. I've never used any of them. I've never <laughs> done a proper fermented pickle. I've only done quick yeah. pickles with like yeah, a few too. ingredients. The only, um, I, the only thing I've ever fermented is um, sauerkraut. I ferment. Well, I think I'm going to have to do it. I even have a kid. Like, I'm so good. Do you ever do this? Like, you know you're going to do stuff, so you start collecting all the things. So, like, I oh, even yeah, have, like, okay, good, 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 good. Because there are people like us and the people who have perfect houses, I think. I don't think you get to have both. <laughs> <laughs> so I even have a fermentation crock that I got. So I think this is the year. And I did Of course do... you do. <laughs> of course you have the fermentation crock. I'm not surprised. You have the best, got... most extensive collection of kitchen stuff. We just clicked. Because for a while I was going to do sell some stuff as photography props. And we had had a storage unit for several years and so Cheryl cleaned it out and just kept the best things for me because it's like selling on Etsy is not for me 
Ooh, okay, you so, will make it spicy. I know, David, that was, all right, so I was just like, I have no peppers. I, and I was gonna use dried peppers, but the Asian market is li less than a block <gasps> away. So he ran over, he got me these serranos. So they're probably gonna be pretty hot. <laughs> and then, okay, so I'm gonna put in, I love putting um, coriander seeds in. So mm. I'm going to make a mixture. So this is some vinegar and it's got, I is got it apple, apple cider. cider? It's apple cider and rice vinegar. So I put Ooh. some rice, rice vinegar. You can use any vinegar. You can use white vinegar because that's usually what's used for pickling. I've got apple cider vinegar here. And then I'm going to add some sugar and some kosher salt. Obviously, you can leave the salt out if you're SOS free. And the sugar, too, actually. You can use dates. You could put, oh, you know what, actually? I noticed that David left this piece of apple here. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, why don't I just throw that in the pickles? Because that'll add the sweetness. If you don't want to use sugar, you can use dates and dried fruit. Or oh, date puree, that. right? Yeah. So, um, but I really love, it's like, it's like kitchen sink pickles, <laughs> right? So I'm going to add this into my jars. I might have to start another jar, but let's get this jar going first. So, um, and then I, to my vinegar, and again, you can skip this, you can put date puree um, or maple syrup would be fine. Uh, I'm gonna put a little bit of sugar and I'm gonna put a little kosher salt. Where did I put the kosher salt? See, this is, this is me not organized <laughs> from getting home late last night. This is me in every um, class that I ever teach. I like ever, have everything <laughs> laid out, but I still lose it. <laughs> it's it's because okay. we're thirty two now. That's why. I know. This is what happens to your brain at thirty two. Okay, so I'm going <laughs> to dissolve that in the vinegar, and then I'm going to add my spices and some hot water, which I have over here. So we just want to be able. We want to cover the vegetables. So I have red onion in here. You can put some garlic cloves in here. You could put ginger. Um, you know, obviously ginger is going to give it a very specific taste. So I'm going to put coriander seeds. Um, and I'm going to put some, I like bay leaf in mine. Ooh, that um, sounds good. You know what I really like in it is star anise. Um, but I don't know if I have any. Let me see. Cheryl hates it. She can tell if it's in <laughs> anything. It makes me crazy. Um, oh, no. But what, All right, you won't be I want to make it. A, no, no. Well, sometimes. She doesn't love weird pickles, too, like if, if they're cucumbers, okay. And I just want to take a moment to make a disclaimer to anyone who's just starting to watch now that she is making a quick pickle, which is not the same thing as making of a proper ferment or like um, canning bast pickles or things that you can just throw and leave for a very, very, very long time. So what's both good and could potentially be bad about quick pickles is, is that you, they're going to be able to eat them very quickly, but they're not going to last. You're not going to eat them next year. You're going to eat them in Exactly. And, um, you know, you could do this with just, I sometimes do just pickled red onions, right? So you could just do red onions with vinegar. Like you just take them, you just toss them in vinegar, you make your dish and then you put them on. Um, you can do this with just carrots, cucumbers. You could just do cucumbers. I think the point is you just, you don't need to do much to create these quick pickles to make a wonderful garnish for your shawarma or your sandwich or, you know, I'm sure like sometimes when I'm like in the mood for something like this and I don't have it, this is just a super easy way to put it together because it, it, it within you want, you know, the longer you let it sit, the more flavor it's going to have. But even if it just sits a little bit, you'll have some flavor. Right. And I, I think you're a little bit like me. If I want something right now, having something adjacent <laughs> to that is just fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Adjacent. <laughs> Um, okay, so I'm going to just, I'm going to put enough water to fill up. And I'm doing it in the jar just because it looks cool. And that's where a good place to store it. <laughs> now, I love I love jars like that, too. And then you see yeah. it in the fridge and you'll go, oh, I can put um, I have some of this I myself. have pickles. <laughs> right. Oh, Joanne says her dad called them quickles. 
which is oh, awesome. Oh, I like that. <laughs> you know, I think I, I think I saw that in the New York Times Quickles. I think I think there's a New York Times uh, pickle recipe that they call Quickles. Oh, I like that. That's kind of awesome. Joanne is also yeah. talking about another spice. Have you had black cumin seeds? They're also yes. pretty awesome. Okay, they're also called sativa seeds. I think there's another name for them. Yes, those are, and they're really, 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 really good for you. Yes, black cumin seeds. And they're very tasty. You can get those and black cardamom in the Indian market. I will say black cardamom is significantly more than regular card regular cardamom in the Indian market is cheap. Oh, really? Um, yeah, I try to get a lot of my spices. So I like my friends will come over and shop my backup spice drawers and containers because I'll go ahead. <laughs> I mean, I would rather give it to someone who's actually charging a fair price and buy a pound of it than to spend yeah. six dollars on a quarter ounce of something. That makes me. Yeah. Missed. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. Um, all right, so the final thing I'm going to do here is we're going to garnish our shawarma with some shredded purple cabbage. Um, the, the mushroom and the onions and the soy curls are roasting um, on the grill outside, <laughs> <laughs> grill pan. Um, and then I'm going to put together a, just a quick little sauce. So um, obviously, if you have homemade yogurt, use homemade yogurt. Kathy's got wonderful recipes for homemade yogurt. I have some on my website as well. Homemade yogurt's so easy to make and it has so few ingredients, so it's better because it doesn't have like oil added. It doesn't have, you know, all these thickening agents and stuff. But for now I'm using a little store-bought <clears throat> cashew yogurt because I haven't been home to make yogurt. Um, so I'm basically, this is so easy. I'm just gonna add the yogurt, about a cup of yogurt. And this is going to be our, our sort of sauce for the shawarma. And I'm going to add some turmeric powder. Ooh, so just a little. Yeah, just about three, like about three quarters or so, of a, tea, a little less than a teaspoon. <clears throat> and that's going to be our, and if you want, you can put a little salt in it. Um, that's going to be our sauce. That's, you know me, Kathy. I'm just like, my whole goal all the time with all of this is to just show how easy it is to do this stuff. You know, we're chatting, so it seems like it's taking a long time. But if you were just in your kitchen doing this, it's simple. It doesn't require a lot of ingredients. It doesn't require a lot of prep or a lot of time. Anyone can do it. And that's like the goal here. So um, and it's a lot of flavor. Like that's the most important thing. We want to have a lot of flavor um, so we can enjoy it and have feed our friends and our family. Right. Fennel seeds. I'm putting fennel seeds in. I forgot the fennel seeds. <laughs> Ooh, I love fennel seeds and stuff. And and that's the thing too. It's like I think sometimes people think you can either have easy, healthy, or tasty food, and but you can't necessarily have all three. And you really can. Yes, yes, that's that's the thing. And you know, I'm constant. Like I, you know, and I get it. We're busy. Um, we have kids, we have jobs, we have jobs and kids, we have relatives we're taking care of. Um, time is very precious. So it, the main thing is um, to have a well-stocked pantry, right? Frozen fruits and vegetables. I think we've talked about this before. And on my website, on the We Heal website, I have the pantry essentials and it sort of just goes through. You want to have all your favorite spices, all your favorite favorite condiments, right? Your beans, your grains, um, all the things that you can throw a quick meal together with. Um, and once you get well stocked, you you just always have something you can put together, right? It's, it's very true. The other thing that I would add, because I talk about pantry, freezer, and stuff like that, is having a slow cooker, an instant pot, can also be super helpful. So I've been using the 360 stainless steel crock pot thing lately and it has a high setting ah. that's higher so it takes yeah less than an hour for me to make grits so like today i went ahead and put some of that and then i had a small slow cooker and made and just squished up some tofu put my scrambled tofu spices in so i sat over there while everything cooked and now i have breakfast for like the next three days so yeah yeah. It's okay to make things easy on yourself. 
Yeah. And I love, you know, somebody, okay, you know, I'm the huge fan of the, the local buy nothing group, right? I, I, yes. I think I've talked about this before. Like I got this stainless steel, I mean, sorry, this uh, cast iron pan from them. I got like most of my kitchenware because in San Francisco here, we didn't move our stuff from Austin. So I just thought I'd go on the buy nothing group and get what I could. We furnished our entire apartment, all my kitchenware. I, I did buy the Instapot because um, unlike in Austin where I was gifted an Instapot, no one had an Instapot, but um, but I had the Instapot in Austin for like six months before I ever used it. And I thought I was going to give it away. And when I finally started using it, I'm like, what was I waiting for? Like, this is the, like one of the best things ever because it cooks your beans quickly. It cooks your grains quickly. You can make yogurt, like all, then you're the kind of the queen of that, um, the, the, uh, Instapot. I, I'm just like kind of a novice really. Well, and the thing is, you don't need to know everything. Like, I'm just, I'm a little obsessive, and I use that for the power of good, for all of our goods. But, like, the thing I like about both the Instant Pot and the Slow Cooker, because they're different kinds of people or different times at your life you would use one over the other, both allow you to put stuff in and go do something else so that you're not standing yeah. over the stove, so you're not like, I have to be – set this whole hour that I'm in the kitchen. And I think that's what's really, really helpful. And Justine is saying, was the turmeric? Lisa used the same turmeric that I have in my spice store. Absolutely. It is plain old turmeric that she got in a giant bag. Like I get a lot of my stuff in. Um, and so yeah, saying, I might not use black? this in my lifetime. <laughs> yes, you will. I know you will. Oh yeah. And Joanne says, don't forget rice and grains in the instant pot. It, and like things like oatmeal, or if you wanted to make kanji for in the morning, you can put it and have I love it set kanji. to start. I just made juk. I, I did a Korean class, which I am not an expert in. I did, I did as much research as I could, and we have an H Mart. So I had to look very hard. I know where all the Japanese food is, where all the Thai food is, where some of the Vietnamese is. And um, I got to try a bunch of new stuff and like, Chapchi, Chapchi is J A P A Chapchi. I I say Chapchi. Yeah, I have a recipe for that on my website. I love it's so good, so easy, right? And you can eat it hot, cold, or room temperature. So it's been hot, and it's sweet potato starch noodles. And I ate it cold every day for lunch. Since then, it was delicious. So. Something like that, even that you may make something or like what Lisa's doing today, there's two of them and she's making extra so that she can have a special surprise for herself later. Yeah, batch cooking. Um, it's funny because um, my husband and I eat like rolled oats every day. Like we're eat like if I don't make hot oatmeal in the winter, you, you remember, you know, I made all those overnight oats and you make overnight oats, and, but we don't even do it overnight. Like we get up in the morning, we put it in a bowl with the chia seeds and the milk and we stir it up and like come back and then we eat it. Like it's not even fully soaked, but as it's delicious with the fruit and the cinnamon and everything on it. Um, but there was one day recently where we were out of rolled oats and it was like a panic. Oh no, what are we going to do? We don't have our oats. And I had a bag of um, steel cut oats. And I was like, oh man, they take so long to make. Oh no, they don't. I, I'll put them in the Instapot. <laughs> and like, that's awesome. And that is, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. And there's like a big like thing about how long do you cook them? Because Jill Newsonow and I have different cooking times in the Instant Pot for many things, but we both like our steel cut oats chewy. So some people are like, it's not cooked. And, but then in the slow cooker, people don't like steel cut oats because they become very soft. So it's like, they do. Yeah. An array, and you it's, just, it, yeah. it's a spectrum, right? Where is your own yeah. place on that spectrum? Well, it's really funny you bring up Jill, um, who I think I told you that she, her younger sister, Andrea, and I were best friends when we were kids. We all grew up on Long Island. And I remember Jill being this, like, sort of like this goddess presence over there who, who I saw every once in a while, and she was vegetarian, and I just thought she was so cool. And then later now, I'm like, Jill, you know, she's like one of the community. And, um, her book, um, the uh, Cooking Under Pressure, I think is the one. Um, yeah. She has those charts, charts, and that her charts for grains and beans are my go-to all the time. If I, if off the top of my head, I'm not sure how to how long to cook something. I actually have them in my notes in my phone, both her charts. That's awesome, and I love Jill. 
and I miss it. We, yeah, we were seeing great. each other a lot at conferences and stuff, but she's, she's a great person. Okay. So, um, so I made the pressed mushrooms on your show before. And the reason why I'm doing it again, um, and you could do this on the grill, you start them in the cast iron pan. It's the, the wicked healthy, um, technique. So uh, the reason I'm doing this is because when I was a kid, I'm going to season them with a little dry rub. I'm, I'm trying this stuff from Trader Joe's. I've never tried it before. Um, I usually just do my, you know, cum cumin and pepper, smoked paprika and stuff. So I'm going to do a little dry rub. Um, but uh, so when I was a kid and my mom made steak, um, she basted it with an ingredient that I've never seen anybody else do. Um, I've only seen this ingredient eaten on toast in England. Um, <gasps> but when I was a kid, my mom basted it, our steak, with Marmite. <laughs> that's exciting because that's like the pre-nutritional yeast, nutritional yeast, right? Because it is yeast extract. It is. And so I, um, it's, I thought, oh, gosh, my mom made steak like that when I was a kid. And I'm going to try it on my mushrooms. And it came out so good. Hang on, this is, I think I might have this a little high. I'm doing my pressed mushrooms first. And I'm going to then finish them. I'm going to finish them with Marmite on, on my grill pan. So I'm going to press them. And if you watch the show where I did this before, I've got my lion's mane mushrooms in the pan with a little bit of dry seasoning. And I'm just going to press them with another pan. Ideally, I'd have another cast iron pan. But here in San Francisco, I do not. So you're going to press them till the water, so they start releasing water. I might be burning them. <laughs> I have them up a little too high. And then once I'm done pressing them, so once the water is released and they're, they have, they get nice and caramelized, you know what? I did have it up too high, so I'm going to flip them. So I just turned it down. So it's going to get a little caramelized. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to baste it with the Marmite and put it on the grill. And I did this recently as a test. Ooh. It was so good. And then I had my Marmite Oh, you can hear it. You yes, you can hear the sear. So I had my Marmite out. And one of the things I, I always have around that I make regularly because I like to put them on my salad and snack on them is roasted chickpeas. I do them in the air mm. fryer. So I made some with Marmite. <laughs> <laughs> they were so good. I bet. And CJ and, you know, from Scotland loves Marmite. Uh -huh. Yeah. And you know what? Vegemite is not the same. It's not as good. Really? That I did not know. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the other thing I thought I'd add to our barbecue today because um, that's kind of my secret ingredient that I finally decided to try as a vegan on a steak-like dish and it came out great and you could do it and so i'm like oh well you know if i make seitan brisket or tofu steaks or cauliflower steaks i could use marmite just like my mom did oh i love that and joanne says that she loved the oyster mushroom recipe you shared last time she said oh my god it was delicious and worth every penny yay i'm so happy to hear that yeah oyster mushrooms can be pricey for sure yeah. And the best price I can get where I am is at the Asian market. The Asian market. Yeah. And, but you know what, um, if you can get them in Austin, you can buy the blocks and grow your own. And there's also a play they, there's someone who gives them away because you can only grow from the blocks, I think two or three times. And, and those are there. It's actually incredibly easy to grow your own. If you can get those mushroom blocks. There's a place, let me see if I can find it, because I, I get their emails where you can get mushroom blocks from. Online? Yes. That's cool. Um, yeah, I, I grew, I grew, I, the first time I did it, I got a mushroom block. They were the most gorgeous pink oyster mushroom clusters. It looked like coral under the sea. It was incredible. Um, and they were so delicious and so meaty. And I actually was able to grow, like I grew a whole block and then I, I harvested them and I grew a whole other block. And that was like, if I, I bought those at the farmer's market, that'd probably be $80 worth of mushrooms. And the block I think cost me $10. It's North Spore. So N-O-R-T-H. 
S P O R E dot com. And that's something I've been looking for for a while. They were having a monthly block kit and I've been thinking about it, but I didn't do anything about it. So I don't know if it's still there, but you can't get a single block. Are you going to post the link? Because I'm going to look into that. Yes, I will post the link. Okay. Okay, so I got these whole wheat pitas from, um, well, David got them. (laughs) I'm like, please see if the farmer's market has any fresh baked pita bread. Um, And this is great. It's just a super simple whole wheat pita. So my my shawarma ingredients are almost done. So right before they're done, I'm going to throw this right on the... So from, I'm going to throw it right on the grill outside that we're grilling our food on. Um, I'm going to throw it in the oven on the rack <laughs> to just, just to heat it up a little so I can make my sandwich. Let's see if I can I might be able to put this comment in. Did it work? Yay! I put where you can get these, um, the mushrooms. So they'll be, I put it northspore.com slash collection slash shop. It's just where they have everything listed. Okay, great. When I see those lion's mane, because aren't you, you're using lion's mane today or no? Yes, these are lion's mane. Yeah, I'm using lion's mane. And I did do the Marmite on the oysters also, which was really good. And, you know, if you don't like Marmite, obviously skip it. I was just so excited because this is like a childhood thing. And I never thought for as long as I've been plant-based to use it on to create, you know, that same nostalgic flavor from when I was a kid. So I'm going to, now I'm going to put the grill pan on here since we don't have a grill. And I'm going to heat that up. All right. We'll get that going. Look how pretty, look how pretty these pickles are. Look at that. Oh, gorgeous. It is right. really, really gorgeous. <laughs> so if you wanted to infuse the pickles, like if you have root vegetables and you don't have an hour or whatever, you could shred them, you know, or thin, like slice them on a mandolin or create ribbons. Cause that would pickle them more quickly than what I did, which is I did mine on a mandolin, but they're a little bit thicker thick for a quick, quick pickle, like just for the duration of this show. Um, Let me check my shawarma. Oh man, I wish you could smell it in here. It's so good. All right, these will be ready very short. I'm gonna give it another minute. I wanna get a little char on here. So just wanna get a little bit more. I'm gonna get a little bit more caramelization. So I'm going to do that. So again, pretend this was came off our grill and the, you know how you shut the grill when you're cooking. <laughs> well, it looks That's like you doing. just opened the grill with all that steam coming off. <laughs> well, you know, if I were in Austin, I could actually do it on the grill, but it's 107 degrees there. It wouldn't be a lot of fun. <laughs> no, okay. We so would be pretending the there. <laughs> Well, and you know, so the whole point of this series is like, why did we start doing this? Because it's summertime. Our friends, people were getting invited to barbecues and like, we don't want to have to just go and eat the side dishes. Or maybe we do if we're making them ourselves. But, um, or like be the, you know, like, here's my veggie dog from the, you know, we want to have fun things, feel like we're part of it. Um, Include the people who are having the barbecue and see how delicious the plant-based barbecue is too. So that's sort of the the point of this series. And um, with the mushrooms, I, I talked about this when we did the mushroom steaks for the grill, or when we did the um, jackfruit ribs, you pr- prepare it like the day before, and then you just bring it with you and throw it on the grill and heat it up. And, um, and I also talked about that the Wicked Healthy Sarno Brothers are the cr- incredibly creative grill masters with mushrooms. They're how I learned my techniques and they it's crazy i talked about this last time that they in in austin franklin barbecue is like this really famous barbecuer um who has a barbecue place where the lines are around the block you know people from all over the country come and he has this fest this barbecue festival every year called hot luck and it's all these barbecuers and it's this big field and there's just it's all meat and they for the second year in a row were just one of the barbecuers there 
making mushroom steaks and everybody loves them. So they are bringing the plant-based barbecue to the masses, to the people who eat the meat and succeeding. That's awesome. That's so Isn't amazing. that incredible? Okay, so I'm going to do the shawarma, but first I'm going to do my Marmite mushrooms. And these are only going to take a second because basically I'm just going to, I'm just going to spread a little Marmite on them and put them on the grill enough to just char the outside and then they're done. And, you know, you could put this on your shawarma too. I just, for me, it's like, let me see, what did my mom, my mom would make a uh, London broil with Marmite and we'd have a baked potato and a salad. So when I made this, when I when I experimented with this recently, that's what I did. I made baked potatoes and I made a salad and it was just so nostalgic for me. It's awesome to have like a nice jacket potato goes a long way anyhow. Oh, those oh, are that's so, so British. good. Jacket potato, that's so British. <laughs> I don't know why I'm from it's from North Carolina, but I love that. I just remember that from England. They call it jacket, jacket potatoes. And yes. um, mm -hmm. Joanne says it's so cool. Mushrooms have always been meaty. They, they have such a good texture and they have such a good umami flavor. It's that they really bring a lot of it. So those of you who are mushroom haters for texture reasons, I want you to think about things like mincing mushrooms and making them like for tacos or like instead of ground meat or vegan ground meat substitutes. Because I found mm -hmm. a lot of people who don't like the way they feel in their mouth whole can do them mm -hmm. that way. And they have so many good, good for you things. Well, that's the thing. If you're whole food plant-based and you're trying to avoid the process, like veggie dogs and veggie meats and, and you're kind of getting tired of tofu and you don't want to have seitan mushrooms make fantastic meat substitute they're so good for you and they're one of the most sustainable foods and you're right like this technique my son and husband are not mushroom fans especially my son but when i do the pressed mushrooms and then grill them and they get a little charred bits on them with the barbecue sauce he will eat it and then like you said making them the ground meat i like to take like mushrooms and walnuts or like lentils and create a ground meat and then you don't even know it's a mushroom um but it's so good for you they're loaded with minerals and and vitamins and a good source of plant protein so <clears throat> if you can if you can can learn to love them this other way that would be um really good for you and for the planet <laughs> okay, so there's not that we're trying to make you but maybe we are just ever so slightly just try look good oh my gosh do you, do, I am do you so see the mark? Yes. so if i were going to if i were going to a barbecue today i would have either this morning or last night done my pressing and gotten them ready and then i just take them like that to the barbecue and throw them on the grill with the you know with a, either barbecue sauce or in this case today i did marmite Okay, so let's assemble our shawarma. And see, even now in this small amount of time where I wasted a half an hour of your cooking time chatting, you've already you've got two <laughs> meals. Yeah. And that's that's what I want people to see too, is because and, and if you're doing something like this, let's say you go to Costco and get the portobello mushrooms because they're cheaper. You could I make a whole this, bunch um, of freeze. On the Yes. Yes, I threw this just in there on the rack by itself, um, just to warm it up. So I do the same thing because yeah. if not, it'll crack, right? Right. Most okay, of so most now, of it'll crack. Okay, so I'm gonna assemble. So I may have my yogurt sauce here. Okay, so it's just it's yogurt so with a little turmeric. Yeah, so we're gonna start with that, and then let me get my shawarma ingredients so i'm gonna go with the mushrooms right now or you could do both you know I, I like the mushrooms david and judah really like the soy curls i'm gonna put both on this why not it's funny joanne says your... then you have to keep the non-vegans from eating your food <laughs> exactly don't you hate i mean i love it because i want them to love it but then it's like i hate it because then they eat my food right <laughs> I always, I, every time 
I don't make extra. I regret it. Like the one time I brought soy curls to like a super duper red meat eating household. I was like, nobody's going to eat this. So I'm going to bring it for me. And yeah, it was rough. You always have to bring extra. If you have to bring some home, that just works out good. Yeah, but the way I, yes. and Or make sure you just put some aside for yourself because <laughs> I'm always so happy when I see my food go first because I'm like, then I'm able to be like, that was vegan. Like someone who wouldn't eat a vegan dish um, and, and, they'll, and they'll eat it and not know that. And then I tell them and then they can't say like, ew, I don't eat vegan food, <laughs> right? Right. Yeah. No, that always makes me crazy. Honestly. Ooh, it's yeah. vegan. And I'm like, you eat apples. Just just take right. a deep breath. Everything's <laughs> gonna be okay. Well, right. I've I've done okay, book so gonna... signings and stuff where I brought cauliflower queso and I literally will say people will be like, nah, and they make the face and I'm like, I will hold out my hand and if you try it and you don't like it, you can spit it out in my hand and I will get rid of it for you. <laughs> And no one has I'm ever done it yet. Right, I'm Ooh, so my pretty. So I put my so I put my shredded purple cabbage. I put a little salt and pepper in here. You can or you can put a little vinegar on here. You can put dressing, whatever. Um, and I'm going to put in some of my pickles. I am not going to put. So I put the peppers in there just to flavor it. <laughs> I am not going to eat the pepper. Let me see if I I need to dig down here and get some some of the pickled. Uh, Pickled cabbage and stuff. It's all down in there. I love the colors too when you've got like your carrots. And there's lots of coriander seeds in here. I've got my fennel seeds, my bay leaves. And this these pickles will be even better tomorrow. But um it's a little it's a good start. Put a little bit more. Oh, and then I'll I'll fin I'll put a little more sauce. And then you could put some hot sauce on here. It's really good with hot sauce. A little harissa. I'm gonna put a little. Mm. You can put chopped parsley. It's really good with fresh mint. I'm putting a little cilantro, and that's our shawarma. Ooh, that's it. And that then you is just, so gorgeous. And then you just kind of roll it up. Hmm. Oh. Mm. <laughs> I'm I'm feeling that one with you, Lisa. That looks amazing. It's so. so good. Okay, let me, let me, and then I'm going to cut my, my mushroom steaks. Here's my lion's mane steaks. Let me just cut those. I actually cook Those these are... a little faster than I would have, but I would usually like have my heat lower and press them for a little bit longer. So, mm. so good. They look amazing. <laughs> and I think that's it for today. I think that's a lot. And, and <laughs> what's ha what I want people to understand the same thing when I'm doing my classes, a lot of times I will cut up things ahead of time. A, because we saute onions together, and that is enough boring for anybody, right, to watch the <laughs> onion saute. But yeah. you can always cut those things up. Let's say you wanted to make this for this weekend. You could cut mm -hmm. up all the stuff for the shawarma, even um, reconstitute the soy curls the night before, right? Yeah. So you can take these things and spread them out for when they fit for you. And in a pinch. That's true. And in a pinch, or if Sprouts has them on sale, I will buy sliced portobellos, right? You oh, can yeah. buy coleslaw yeah. mix. You can buy a lot well, of things that are shortcuts. Yes. I mean, one of the things I always have in my fridge, um, Trader Joe's has that slaw mix. It's the, it's the red cabbage, the purple cabbage, and the shredded carrots. I have no problem slicing up cabbage, but I know, like, I go through those, and they're inexpensive and super easy. Um, so yeah, and you can buy sliced carrots, you can buy chopped onions, but it's so easy to do yourself and it's cheaper. And also there's no plastic involved. So I prefer to do it that way, but 
But in a pinch, yeah, there's, and this is one of the things we talked a lot about in the classes I was doing for Whole Foods because <clears throat> a lot of people didn't have time. So it was just easier for them to buy the stuff already bagged, already cut, go to a salad bar if it's only for you and get a container and be like, oh, look, carrots, onions, you know, and I'm going to go home and make my shawarma for just me. So I've totally, totally done that before. And, yeah. and the thing is, is I think sometimes it depends. So I think if you're new to cooking, it's great to have all these shortcuts right there. And there's like, mm -hmm. I bought carrot coins so that I could julienne them easier for class this time. But most of the time I use my food processor and I'll just shred up a bunch of carrots, shred up a bunch of cabbage, make my own cruciferous crunch. So I think the thing is, is mm -hmm. if you're first stepping in the kitchen, don't overwhelm yourself, just get what you can get. Then as you become more comfortable, even if you, you can find those little um, food processor choppers, they're mm -hmm. amazing for chopping up a whole onion and that you mm -hmm. don't have to deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> <It's just> and, <laughs> um, what? Joanne says now that Paul, her husband, is up north, she can make oyster mushrooms and actually get to eat some. I, she made them when you <laughs> cooked them, Lisa, and he ate all of them. So she got Yay! Nothing. Yay. <laughs> Try that. I think we also did shredded trumpet um, pulled pork sliders on your show. Those are really easy, yeah. too. And if you have an Asian market next, near you, the trumpet, uh, king trumpet mushrooms are also really inexpensive at the Asian market. And they're even cheaper than the oyster mushrooms. I find for me mm -hmm. right now, I can only get the lion main, lion's mane ones at Whole Foods specialty mushrooms. So they're super expensive. So I've been really oh, thinking yeah. about getting one of those blocks. And now I think I'm going to have to. Yeah, the, the lion's mane are so expensive. That's why I started getting blocks and growing my own. Um, because I love them and they're one of the m better mushrooms for you. Like they have all kinds of magical powers. <laughs> so, um, and, and it, they make, and they're very versatile. Like, so um, they really, they they can be substituted in all kinds of dishes for chicken and beef. And I noticed on the market shelves at places like Whole Foods and Sprouts now, there are companies that are creating veggie burgers out of uh, mushroom meat, which is pretty cool. I had that, and I, I don't know if I'm going to remember what the name was. Is it the one that's kind of in the yellow and something package? And they say it's not made from it's mushroom root mm -hmm. is what it was. And I had a chicken patty, obviously vegan chicken patty, and it was gluten-free, <laughs> and it was really good. They, they discontinued. Yeah. Sprouts gets things we don't get at other parts because the country is segmented in what things go where so I'm not sure if we're going to get mm -hmm. any more I have a pack of their steaks in the freezer oh, to wow. try too and okay. Joanne says mushrooms with magical powers that's when I, I did my <laughs> little fairy wand <laughs> but I, they're supposed to help your brain help you think better if you think, look at Dr. Gregor's G-bombs they're just they're well, that, they're no. really good for you well they're yeah, they're considered a longevity food. Yeah, it's a Dr. Furman, G bombs, oh, and Dr. Greg. Sorry, recommend them. <laughs> There's okay. so many doctors. Wait, I'm getting getting them mixed up. Okay, greens is the G. B beans. O is onion. M is mushroom. Mushrooms. B is berries. Yeah. Right? Is that the G bomb? Yeah. I think that's it. And I'm like, yeah. Okay. I always get lost in there, but yeah. Well, oh, and Kathy Bartle says that Better Homes and Gardens had a good mushroom article in the September 2022 issue, including info on growing kits. That's awesome. Oh, great. Oh, seed. And Apple said the S is for seeds. And so did Gina. Oh. And Thank Veggie you. says, I'm that. so hungry. I never remember the seed part. Thank you for that. Um, I didn't, but yeah. do you notice how I just let it go? Because I'm like, I don't know either. I was thinking, I don't know. Anyhow. <laughs> so I'm going to go, when I hang up with you, I'm going to go put this recipe on um, the website because it's not there yet. So if you go to it and you don't see it, it's because I need to put it up. 
Okay, so you guys, weheal.health. Check out this and many other of Lisa's delicious recipes, and <laughs> she'll be back with us next month oh, too to what? give us. A, oh, I almost forgot. I was so busy promoting Matt and Alona's class. I do have one summer class series coming up. It's the only one I'm doing this summer. It's a four week series. It starts the 17th of July, and it's from uh, it's four Mondays in a row. And um, the first one's breakfast, the second one is lunches, the third one's dinners, and the last one is desserts and snacks. It's super fun, we're on Zoom. I send the list, once you register, I send the list ahead so you can cook along, or if you don't, you can just watch. And at the end of the series, you'll get a free ebook. So that class is also uh, on the site. Well, you need to come buy and put that on the YouTube. You can put it on this YouTube and any of the other ones you've done too, just so people can see it for okay. sure. And send me all Thank the information you, and I'll, I'll send something out about it too. Okay. You're the best. I love, I love doing this with you. Thank you so much. It's so much fun. I love our conversations and I, I really do um, think we need to try to get together so we can just talk about things. And cook together. Well, I think, yes. I think just to hang out too would just be lovely. Because I just, I Come enjoy to San Francisco. It. Oh, I need to. I'm so. <laughs> we need to have a conversation. Maybe we'll start in August. Maybe we'll we'll give you a break from cooking, and we'll just have some conversations. I saw that. Thank you for that. So yes. Yeah, so, so you've got to come, and we've got to go to the Castro. And they have some fantastic shows going on there. Oh my gosh, we, gotta go. we love drag shows. So Cheryl and I are huge RuPaul fans. And um, we grew up, you know, in that community. And it's just, it's just really lovely. So if for okay, those of you, you know who don't know. You know what's showing now? You know what they're doing right now? They're doing drag sex in the city. <laughs> <gasps> That's got to be brilliant. That's going to be I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, hoping, I'm, I'm hoping I can go. It's not running for much longer, but I'm going to try to go before it ends. You, you have to take a picture and send me so I can at least I will. Say I will, definitely. I was adjacent to someone who was there. But, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> um, Pride Month is June. And, actually, what's weird in Durham, we have our Pride Parade in, like, September or October. So it's like Pride in the rest of the world. And um, it's just mm -hmm. another way of supporting everyone. And actually, CJ was at Pride in Scotland, and there were like 17,000 people there. Wow. Which, which might even be more than, it's, uh, than San Francisco. I've been to San Francisco Pride a few times. I've been to New York Pride a few times. Those are my big prides. Um, I've been to LA they, which, and New York. Uh, San the Francisco, when I went the couple of times, they just have so many cool things. Like there's poetry readings and plays mm -hmm. and shows. And so no matter, like, like I can tell you right now, even when I was younger, I didn't want to go out and dance all night. That's, it's too loud. It's not my scene. <laughs> I'm boring. But so you can be a middle-aged 32 year old like we are <laughs> and enjoy things during the day and then have a yes. nice dinner at a lovely restaurant somewhere. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Which is awesome. Well, have fun and um, enjoy San Francisco and I will be there with you, you in spirit and I'll I be know. looking forward to our next talk. Me too, Kathy. Thank you. And thank you everyone for tuning in and for your wonderful questions and your knowledge. I, I, I always feel um, like I learned something when I'm on the show as well. So thank you. And I hope to see you soon. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> and I love that. Uh, Joanne says, well, you don't have to be gay to support pride. Absolutely. Just like in our wonderful vegan plant-based community or meatless Monday community, right? It's the same thing. We support ourselves as people where we are so that we know we have safe spaces to be ourselves. So I appreciate right that on. so much. Right? Isn't that right amazing? On. And Carolyn says, Pride Heart, Rainbow Philly, Pride Heart, Rainbow Philly, which is awesome. <laughs> oh, and CJ's <laughs> going to another Pride next week. And 
yeah, you guys are awesome. Many thanks and have an amazing weekend. I'll talk to you all very, yeah. very soon. Bye. Bye.